So, today I'm going to finish the lowercase letters of the Arial Black Friendly typeface. But I'm also going to make the whole thing, uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers and symbols available as a free download. You can also download the project files for all of these animations you can see on the screen now. So you can get an idea of just how useful and flexible this professionally retopologized font is. I will make short videos on how to make all of these animations because although they are simple I do use some processes where it's hard to guess exactly what I have done just by looking at the project files. So head over to my website hardvertex.com and you'll find everything there as a free download. Okay, let's finish off the lowercase letters. Because I'm sure you're familiar with the method by now, I'm going to bring you a step closer to the method I would actually use when I'm doing this professionally. It allows a little more continuity between the sharpness of the extremities of each letter and of course it's a little bit quicker. First of all, the lowercase u is another letter I just don't have to do as it's just a mirrored version of the letter n. So just as I did for the b, p and q, I'm going to take a copy of the n over here with shift and d and then I'm going to press x and just move it over here. Now we need to rotate this letter by 180 degrees around y by pressing r to rotate then y and just typing 180 and hit enter. I'm going to press Ctrl A and Ctrl R to reset all the rotation values to zero. Now last time I showed you the more precise method of aligning things by changing the origin and messing around with the 3D cursor, but this time I'm going to use the much quicker method of snapping to align the objects. I simply select the object, press G, hold down Ctrl to temporarily enable snapping and I'm going to hover over the corner vertex of the U in our text mesh. This will work perfectly well here, but often snapping won't work correctly if there are not well-defined corners or if the mesh is too dense. So I do just need to reposition the center of this letter. So I'm going to press Shift and S, cursor to selected. I'm going to reset the Z location of this cursor, and then I'm going to right-click and say Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. I'll press F2 and rename this letter to U, and that's done. Okay, let's speed up this process by doing things a little differently. Because these are the last letters of the lowercase font, I'm just going to throw in a few more advanced techniques and ideas, but feel free to just ignore them completely. This time, I'm not going to separate the letters into individual objects to work on them. I'm going to do them all at the same time, which is how it would normally be done. It does require that you understand when to add an internal edge and when you can't. I hope you've been paying attention. So with the object selected, I'm just going to tab into edit mode and we'll start working on the V. Now, it might seem natural to want to connect up the internal and external corners here and the triangle that would create can easily be solved just by adding one vertex here. But this topology causes all sorts of problems in animation, simulation and curvature control and it leaves a three-spoke pole where we just don't want one on an edge. And this is verging on creating non-manifold geometry and game engines don't like it. We always try to avoid this particular structure. Just be aware that it's best to avoid connecting opposing corners. Now the solution we do need requires the creation of a six-spoked pole which you may have heard is a bad thing, but it's not. There are several circumstances where a six-spoke pole is the best solution, and this is one of them. There'll actually be three of them in the W. Okay, now that's getting a bit advanced for this guide, so let's just get back to doing it properly, and you're just going to have to trust me that the method I use is optimal in 99% of all situations. What we need to do is add an additional vertex along this edge on the outside, and another one on this side on this edge. Now we need to align these vertices correctly with the point they'll connect to, but this time we can't just move them up and down the z-axis to align them. If we do that, it looks like it works because shrink wrap is insisting that our vertices stick to our letter shape, but this vertex is now in the wrong place. What we actually need to do is press GG to go into slide mode and slide this vertex along the edge and hold down control to snap it to this vertex. Now it might look to you that it's in the wrong place as you might expect it to be aligned along the z-axis, but it's actually at a tangent to the angle of the edge here. Again, it's getting too complicated, but this is the optimal position for this vertex. So I'll just do the same for the one at the other side. GG, control, hover, click. Now we'll also need a vertex along this bottom edge so we can create all quads, but this time we'll be connecting this vertex internally, which is just what we need. And it's this vertex which is actually responsible for the six pole pole that you'll eventually see. Now I can just switch to edge mode and fill in this face from the top here, and this one at the other side here. Now I can select this edge at the side and just fill in these two faces. And now I need more geometry on the legs, so I'm just going to add five loops in here and five loops in here. Good, I can't do any more at this stage on the V, so let's move on to the W. I'm going to apply the same techniques here as I did for the V, so I need extra vertices along the legs here, 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 and here. I don't need any on these edges here. Now just as with the V, let me align all of these with GG, Control, Hover and Click, and I'll do that for all of those. 
Now I need an extra vertex along the straight edges at the kind of turning points of the letter. Here, here, and here. And now I can fill all this in. I haven't really explained how the F2 add-on works when filling in faces yet. Uh, I will get around to that, but for now you're just going to have to watch which edges I select to fill in each face. Good. Now I need more edges along here, so I'll just add five. And the same at the other side. Control R5, Enter and Enter. I'm going to add two in here, and I'm going to add two in here. And that's as much of the W as I can do for now. So let's move on to the X. Now the X is really easy. Just go to Edge Select Mode and fill in each of the faces on the legs by selecting this edge and filling in a face. Same on this one. And now I can also fill in the center face, so I'll just press F again. Great, now I need more edges along each leg, I think. And I think three will do in each one. So Control R, three, Enter and Enter. And I'm going to do that for all four of them. That's as much of that as I can do for now, so let's move on to the Y. Now the Y, I just want to add one vertex on this edge here, and align it straight away with GG, Control, Hover and Click. Now let's just check the vertex counts on these two sections. There are seven here, I'm going to space them out, and there are seven here as well, so I'll just space them out and we're good to fill them all in. I'm going to select the top edge here and fill in this face. I'm going to select the other top edge here and fill in this face, and then I'm going to select the bottom of the Y here and fill in all the way around. Now I do want more edges along here, I'm just going to put uh, five on this side, and I think I'll just use five on the other side as well. And that's done. Uh, the Z is pretty easy too, I just want one extra vertex here along the top, and one along the bottom. I'm just going to line both of these with G, X, Control, Hover and Click, and the same on this one. Now I can fill these in just by selecting uh, this edge and filling in one face. Now I select this edge here, move the mouse right down, and fill in these two, and then this edge here, and just fill in the last two. Now I'm going to add some edges here, I'll just add three, I'm going to add three here, and three here. And that's all the letters prepared for the next step. So I'll tab to object mode and apply the shrink wrap modifier. Now I'm going to tab back to edit mode and make sure I'm in edge selection mode by pressing 2. Press A to select everything, W just to select the borders, Control I to invert the selection, press X and choose edges to delete all the internal edges. Now I'm going to press 1 for point select mode, press A to select everything, F to fill, I to inset, type 0.001, press X and use faces. Now all the letters have their tiny border. Now I'm going to go to each letter and expand these tiny borders, just as we've done for all the other letters. So Alt and click on the inside of a letter, press GG, hold Alt, type minus 30, hit Enter, and let go of Alt. And I'll do that for all the letters. GG, Alt, minus 30, Enter. GG, Alt, minus 30, Enter. GG, Alt, minus 30, Enter. Now I can set about filling all the faces in for each letter, they'll all connect up correctly. I'll just do all this quite quickly, you've seen me do it lots and lots of times. And now I can go back and add the internal geometry for each letter. And again, it should all be very straightforward. Again, I'll just do this quickly. You've seen me do this lots of times. Now we have the correct geometry for every letter. I can just press A to select everything, Shift and N to recalculate the normals. I'm going to tab to object mode, press Control and 3 to add a subdivision surface modifier, and then right click and shade smooth, and tab back to edit mode. Now we want to add the tightening loops for every extremity. And something you need to know here is that when you slide a loop, obviously it can only go in one of two directions, towards the inside of the mesh or towards the outside. For that reason, we can't add all of the tightening loops at the same time, unfortunately. For example, if I want a tightening loop at the top of the V and one at the bottom, I can't control them both together as they're both going the same direction, like this. But I can control all of the edges which are traveling in the same direction together, and that's a huge time saver. And to do this, I'm going to add a control loop in here, left click and right click to leave it in place, 
Then I'm going to press Ctrl and G and add this to a new vertex group. I know I always say you should, but I'm not going to rename this vertex group. It's very temporary. Now the next edge, which will travel upwards here, and this time press Ctrl and G, but this time I want to select Add to Active Group. And now I'll go along the tops of all the letters, and each time adding them to our active vertex group. I'm going to leave the Z alone, as that's a bit of a pain. We'll get to that in a minute. Now in the Vertex Group section over here, I want to press Select, and that will select all of our newly added loops. I'm going to right-click and mark them as a seam, which turns them all red. And as I usually do, I can press GG and E and F if necessary to make sure they're going the right way, and slide them all up together. And now we're ensuring that all of the letters match in this direction. That's great. So now I can do the same for all the extremities which face downwards. I'll add a loop here and make a new Vertex Group. I'm going to add one here and assign it to the active group, and the same for all the others along the bottom. We might be able to do the bottom of the Y here, but I will do it separately, I think. Now select them all in the vertex group section, mark them all as seams, and I'm going to move all these down as one. GG and E and F if necessary to make sure they're going the right way. Now we'll add uh, one just for the bottom of the Y. And we have some strange corners in the Z, so I need to add quite a few in here. I need the normal ones we have here and here. But to tighten up these corners, I need to add them in what might seem to you as quite strange places. And all of these would benefit from being spaced out a little. Now there are some more advanced techniques for spacing out internal geometry, but I don't want to go over those at this stage. It really needs its own video, and I'll cover it somewhere else. For now, just using G-Stretch and Space and Loop Tools, wherever it seems useful, will do it just fine. Okay, good. So now I can go around all the letters and add any tightening loops I want to the internal corners. So on the V, I might want to add one here and here. And I would uh, space these vertices out along the edge here first, and then use G stretch on that loop with project, just to make sure all my spacing is good. Uh, similar things on the W, so I'll just add these here, 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 here and here, and again I would space them all out using G stretch, but I won't bore you with that here. Now same for the X, I would want four loops around the center just to tighten up those corners, and I'd probably use G stretch on all of these as well. And I would just put one in here for the Y. Now the version of the font I make available for download will have some spacing done. It's not that critical unless you're doing quite high-end professional jobs. It'll work just fine as it is for most things. Anyway, we can now just move the camera a little. I'm going to press A to select everything, press E, Y, 0.4 to extrude them. I'm going to press 3 to go to face select mode, alt and click on that cross section edge here, and shift alt and click on one for each of the letters. I'm going to press I to inset, and type 0.04, press W to select all these borders, and mark them all as seams. I can turn on the on cage switch for the subdivision surface modifier, and they're all done. I'm going to tab to object mode and I'm going to reset the rotation by pressing Ctrl A and R. And I want to add the material to them all here. Now I'm going to tab back to edit mode and I can press A to select everything and press P to separate them. I want them to be all separated into separate letters. And I can do that by choosing loose parts. They're all now separate objects and I can move the centers of them all at the same time by right clicking and choosing set origin, origin to geometry. Now the last thing to do is select each letter and move its origin to the correct place. So I'm going to press Shift and S, cursor to selected, reset the cursor's Z position over here, and then right click and set origin, origin to 3D cursor. I'm going to press F2 to name this letter V, and I'm going to do exactly the same for the other letters. And now I'm going to select all of these in the outliner and I'm going to move them into the Aerial Black Friendly Collection. Now there's one last thing to do to finalize this selection of letters. I want to select everything, all the letters, and tab into edit mode. Now if I just turn on face orientation in the overlays menu, we can see that some of the letters are blue and some are red. That means some of them are inside out. The red ones are inside out. And this is one of the most common problems encountered by newer modelers. Check this kind of thing regularly when you're modeling. If anything's going wrong, this is very often the problem. 
All you have to do is press A to select everything, then press Shift and N to recalculate the normals and everything will turn blue. In fact, while we're doing that, I'll just point out the other most common problem newer modelers forget, and that is to apply the rotation and the scale of your objects. So you want to press Ctrl and A and choose Rotation and Scale. Do this often when you're modeling. Don't apply the location though, that will cause you problems. Okay, that's it, the lowercase letters are done. Now I think this is probably a good time to make the entire typeface available for download. So you can go to this website here on the screen uh, to download it. I'll put a link in the comments below. Now you do have to sign up just because I'm interested in how many people download it, but it is completely free and you can use it however you want without any attribution or licensing concerns. It's just free. I will be making other typefaces available over time and they'll probably cost something just because it takes a while to do them properly. But this one, well, just take it. You can use it to do lots of amazing things in motion graphics, which you will have considered the domain of things like Cinema 4D. But because Blender has such a strong overall tool set, then we can actually do lots of things that Cinema 4D just can't. And I will occasionally show you some very powerful motion graphics techniques with text and logos. And this font will be a great resource for learning these things. Okay, see you in the next one. Thanks very much.